Oh, that's a big one. Oh, wow. Good gracious. <laughs> oh, dude. These are big. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing episode. My name's Steven. We're on my 24 foot bay boat out here in the Gulf of Mexico. I had planned to go further. Conditions did not allow. It's windy. Cameras never pick up what the actual conditions are, but it is very close chop and windy and cold. But we're sitting over some nice structure and a lot of bait and fish on there. So I have plenty of squid, have a little double drop rig or high-low rig with the one alt circle hook, 30 pound Yazuri fluorocarbon leader. I've attached a two ounce bank sinker to the bottom of it. And this is a 3000 size Daiwa spinning reel with 15 pound braid and a seven and a half foot medium heavy fast action spinning rod. See, I'll sit back, relax, and let's see what we can catch. So all I'm doing is just cutting this squid up into small chunks, just prepping my bait. And that's what we're going to be putting on those smaller hooks. It's a great way this time of year to catch some pretty good fish. So that's enough for now. Seems like this year the wind is extra relentless. Some years it's real calm in the winter. Other years it is just blowing and it is blowing this year. But we get out when we can. That's where that 24 foot length in that boat comes in handy. There we go. They all know squid, if you ever fish with it, it smells so bad on your hands, on the boat. But that's also what gets these fish fired up. They love it. Come on, we need you to get that hook in your mouth. Oh, that one did. That one liked it. <laughs> oh man, see how fast it is to get a bite doing this type of fishing? It is so fun because there's really not that much bait on these reefs and so these fish are starving and when you drop down a squid they get fired up on it real quick and here's oh we have two fish and they're both red snapper i was hoping that bottom one was a beeliner all right little buddies y'all got to go back maybe you can go turn into a 30 pounder one day and we'll come back and catch you when the season's open and you're bigger there he goes sweet that didn't take long at all <laughs> let's get baited up again so this red snapper out of season i know you hear that a lot but if you drop the squid down enough eventually you'll catch something that you can keep like a beeliner like a mangrove snapper like a porgy you never know flounder out here this time of year scamp grouper a lot of good eats down there on the reef so that's down there again i like to make sure my line's straight below my rod tip if it starts drifting back you should add some more weight that's why i like squid oh my goodness that's why i like squid though because it doesn't come off the hook real easy smells great for the fish not necessarily for yourself and it stays on the hook really good so you can get those little fish that peck at it and then eventually something big like this will come and eat it dad going this is a lot of dead weight right here what the heck do we have huh interesting what is that is it another red snapper yeah oh wow that one's pretty dang that one's a nice one and it's not in season but that would be a nice keeper wow what a pretty fish boom he gone the goal with those is to not get poked or cut <laughs> man do i love this type of fishing here because it's just non-stop action now the reason i say that you want to keep your line straight down below your rod tip instead of it drifting to the back that helps prevent a lot of hang-ups so you don't lose your weight in your whole rig and also you're able to feel the bite a lot better when it's straight below you especially with braided line but what i probably will start doing here in a sec is chumming up and maybe trying to get like a 20 pounder to come up in the chum line and then sight cast to them i know there's some down there i just gotta you just gotta get them chummed on top so that'll be fun let's try that 
So I'm going to take those small pieces of squid I cut up and just do handfuls at a time. And then I've tied on some 50 pound fluorocarbon leader, a three alt circle hook and an identical piece shape and size to the bait I'm chumming with with no weight or anything. And we're gonna see if we can pull up some big snapper or whatever wants to come behind the boat on this chum. You can get like some 20 to 30 pounders coming behind the boat. It's really cool watching them come on top and feed. So I just do a handful at a time till they sink out of sight and they'll start drawing them up on top. Oh. Yep, there we go. That worked. <laughs> that worked well on the chum slit. And then I threw a piece of just squid with no weight on there and let it sink down with that chum and it looks very natural. Now we just hooked up. Oh wow. This is a big fish. Really big fish. That is awesome. I love when a plan comes together. Now all we have to do is land it. That's always the challenge there. Just getting it in the boat. Ah, come here, you want to see how big you are. Oh, it looks like a good one. Yeah, it does. Oh yeah, that's a real good one. And there's one behind of it chasing it. Wow, that's a big red snapper. Whoa. Golly. I can't keep them, but dadgum, is it fun. <laughs> See if we can get you in the boat. We got him. Wow, that's a stud. Golly. On the free line, little smallest bait I threw out today. Caught the biggest fish. Y'all, I'm telling you, chumming and free lining a bait out catches some monsters. Look how big this red snapper is. It's about a 15 to 20 pound fish on the smallest bait I threw out today. Free lining it. How incredible. Let's get it back and we'll come and catch this one back when the season opens. All right, big sucker. There you go. Oh man, she had to get oriented and it's going right back down. What's crazy is she had like three other snapper around it. Woo! I like when a plan comes together. I uh, started chum just to try to get the bigger ones because no matter what, even if you can't keep them, it's still fun to catch them as long as you release them healthy. Now, if you're fighting these fish and they're getting bit by sharks and dolphins and breaking you off, might as well go try something else. Just to make a long story short, be ethical with your catch. Whew, that was neat. So as I mentioned, I've been chumming and throwing out little chunks of squid. But this is all I threw out to catch that big old red snapper. A small chunk of squid with a three alt circle hook. I've done a loop knot in 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. And it's about eight feet of leader. And I have an FG knot coming straight to my 50 pound braid. Very slim setup and stealthy. That's the key. You can catch tuna this way cobia snapper you can catch pretty much anything this way now you never know what you're going to hook into so i do like having a little bit bigger reel this is an 8,000 size daiwa and a six and a half foot crowder enamic jigging rod this sucker right here is powerful but it's a lightweight setup and that's what i like to use now the reason you do a small piece like this is because the pieces that i'm throwing out are small the key is to chum and bring them up, not to make them full. So you cut little small pieces like that, throw it out, and then put the same piece that you would throw out, but on your hook. Match that chum, because if you sit there and throw a giant piece of chum, when you've been chumming with little bitty pieces, it's not gonna look natural. When you add a weight on there, it falls too fast compared to what it would be without a weight. Make it look as if it's a piece of your chum or chunk. And like I said, you can catch anything this way. So I've been keeping a steady handful of squid going out. Now I'm gonna throw this squid right there with it and give it a lot of line. My chum's out of sight. Oh, see, there's one. Oh, just like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then put the heat to them. Oh, God. These big fish are something else with the power they have. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> See how effective that is, though? That type of chumming and then free lining. You can do the same thing for tuna, cobia, mangrove snapper, these reds. Oh, he took me down in the structure. Dang, put the heat on him. And uh, not enough though. Let's see what happened. Oh, nothing happened. Just pulled the hook out of his mouth. Woo, too much heat. <laughs> Let's do that again. I'm gonna take a little handful, toss this out. I'm gonna get this one quickly in there. There we go. Now I wanna just let it sink. Oh yeah, and we're on. Get you away from that structure. I'm not gonna have you break me off this time. Yeah, buddy. This is why you wanna throw it on big tackle like this for this scenario. Keep them off of that reef. There he is. It's another big one. Wow, that's another giant one. And there's one behind of it, equally as big. Good gracious. <laughs> oh, dude. These are big snapper. <laughs> oh, that is something else. I mean, it really is something else catching them like this. Oh, wow. Dude. And he just spit up a lot of chum. You've been down there eating my stuff, huh? Look at all that chum you've been eating. You're welcome. Got you this time. Woo! Another big one. Y'all, that is another stud. I tell you that. That is amazing the power these fish have. They have a big, wide broom tail and just weight on their side and aggressiveness. Oh, wow. That would make for a good meal one day. But for now, she gets to go back and hopefully makes more snapper. <laughs> Thank you much. This one spit up a bunch of chum. All right. Woo! She was ready to go. She was ready to go. I haven't seen any taxmen yet, but I still don't want to keep my hand down there if I don't have to. I'm up for it one more time. Do y'all want to see it again? See us catch another big fish? I think so. Let's do it. We have a little bit of squid left. Might as well use the rest of it. We're going to try this one more time. A little piece. Trim up the rest of these. How can you turn down catching big fish like that? I mean, these are mongos. Gonna get one out. Let that sink. I'll throw another one. And then we'll throw my bait up in there. Here goes the one where I'm going to toss my one with the hook in it. Hurry up, wash my hands off. You want it to get the same sink rate and everything. And the current and tide are perfect right now. I'm happy with what I've caught so far. Catching one more will be a little bit of a bonus. But after this, we're gonna head back to land. We're about nine miles out right now. Oh, there it is. Oh, it smacked it, then it just let go. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> oh, I couldn't close a bail in time. Overthinking it. What are you doing? Just eat it. Those are the smaller ones, I believe. Yeah, those are trigger fish or something. Just. Oh, that one's not. That one's not. That's a big one. Oh, wow. Okay. He said, I ain't no trigger fish. Ugh. Dang. I was literally about to pull it in because I thought my bait was a goner. You know, thought it had gotten munched off, but apparently not. Ugh. Hooked a big one again. Ugh. This is awesome. I mean, how can you ask for much more? Pretty sunny day, catching big fish. There it is, I see it. That's a big one there too. God, these would have smoked me on my inshore rod. Oh, what is that? That's a grouper. Oh, that's cool. That's a grouper. 
pretty sure that's a gag. Yeah, it is. Darn, gags are out of season, I believe, right now. That's a beautiful gag grouper. Wow. These things are so regulated. You want to know something more regulated than Red Snapper? Are these jokers. Golly, dude. <laughs> Yo, look at that big old gag grouper in Alabama state waters. That's a shame it has to go back. This is such a great eating fish. Golly, I wish he had opened his mouth for you. Look how big their mouth is. They're incredible. Let's hurry up and get them back. Can't keep them. Think red snapper are highly regulated. These are even more. That's incredible. <laughs> oh man. That's a great way to end a fishing trip right there. To be fair, I didn't expect that. Freelining, little bitty piece of squid. Chumman caught some of the biggest fish of the day. And my hands are all cut up now. But just catching them and be able to lay your hands on them, that is fun. And getting it all in video. I hope y'all enjoyed this fishing trip. If you did, go leave a comment down below. Red Snapper's here, very good eating fish. Grouper's up here, out of the picture. <laughs> it's so good. But I'm gonna clean up all this squid and stuff and head back to the boat ramp. What an incredible trip. Y'all, it's time to head back. What a gorgeous day. I'm glad that y'all can join me on this fishing trip. This is awesome. Y'all, so we just made it back to Orange Beach. I mean, it turned out to be a really pretty evening. It's chilly though, and it's about to be like 18 degrees here in South Alabama, which I know 18 degrees isn't cold up north, or I've been in that in South Korea and Germany and colder. But for South Alabama is a place that is not prepared for below freezing temps. But rambling aside, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed yet and you enjoyed this content, and you want to keep up with the channel, I love seeing it grow, go smash that subscribe button down below. Go drop a like and leave a comment. I love reading them. Love seeing and hearing from each and every one of you. It's cool. But we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.